शुरू करें हाँ चालू कर दिया गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल फर्स्ट टू प्लीज वेलकम और स्पीकर I would request uh, Shri Pradeep Kapoor to please give the welcome address, Secretary General of IT. Shri Pradeep Kapoor, please uh, to give the welcome address. Good morning to all. I hope I am audible. Yes, straight, you are. Straight, straight away, my regrets that I am not there physically, but mentally and virtually, I will be joining the event. Uh, I welcome Dr. Sanjukta Bahadri, uh, Chairperson, ITPI Women's Forum, and HOD Urban Planning. SPA New Delhi, Ms. Rashmi Sharma Yadav, IPS, Additional DCP, North District, Delhi Police, Ms. Sarifa Panda Bhatt, she is Director at Nagaro, Co-Founder of Rahagiri Foundation, uh, and Secretary Women's Safety, Security for Safe Guru. Graham, Ms. Paromita Roy, Director Housing, Delhi Development Authority, uh, of course, uh, Professor Dr. D.S. Mishra, uh, President ITPI. Uh, briefly, for the benefit of guests, I would like to speak a few words about ITPI. Uh, this organization was established in 1951 when there were just 15 planners in the country. All of them studied abroad as there was no school of planning uh, in India. And today, uh, I'm, I have proud to announce that we have more than 8,500 planners registered as associate or fellow members of ITPI. The vision of ITPI is to promote dynamic, inclusive, and integrated town and country planning practices, education, research, and institutional mechanism for vibrant, sustainable, and resilient spatial economic development of towns, cities, and regions. To fulfill this vision, ITPI has decided the objectives to advance the study of spatial plan. Under this objective, we undertake the process of formulating the syllabus for planning courses at undergraduate level or postgraduate level. And we recognize the schools who impart planning education in the country. Again, I'm happy to share with you that few years back, we had just 20, 21 schools imparting planning education. And today, the number has increased to 77, which are recognized by ITPI. Besides that, we collaborate with other education institutions, professional bodies like BNIT, Nagpur. We have entered into an MOU with them. 
to exchange the knowledge. Also, we have uh, entered into MOU with Center for Science and Environment, uh, Delhi, again as a knowledge partner. And recently, under G20, the government of India has created Y20, in which ITPI is also included as a knowledge partner. ITPI also has strong presence in the Commonwealth Association of Planners, where the president ITPI is vice president in the CAP and recently constituted uh, the board of Commonwealth Association. ITPI has got nomination in that too. Besides that, we also undertake a distance learning program for those who are in service and they want to enhance their career opportunities in the field of urban planning. So this is briefly uh, about ITPI and we function through 24 regional chapters, most of them established in the state capitals and six regional centers in the important cities of the country. Uh, as far as today's event is concerned, United Nations observed International Women's Day and their theme was digital innovation and technology for gender equality. And very rightly, we have chosen the subject today, the safety of women in city where uh, planners do have some role to play uh, by putting the planning interventions in the safety of women. A few years back, I, I am from Rajasthan and I'm work, I worked in Jaipur. We also organized the women's safety and planning. And, uh, the additional commissioner of police, he suggested few measures. How, what are, what are the impediments in the urban development which attract the, or rather adversely affect the women's safety? And on deliberation, we suggested certain measures how the planning can intervene in providing better safety to the women who are staying in gated communities. So with this, uh, I'm not taking much time because this uh, event is for two hours only and there are three very different speakers, I presume. And with that, once again, I welcome all the key speakers for the event, all the participants who are joining online or offline. I, I saw that there are uh, about more than 60 participants are already joined. So thank you very much, Dr. Bahaduri, giving me a chance to give my welcome address. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shikapu. So now um, the request of Sir Dr. Mishra, the President ITPI, to introduce the theme. Okay. Thank you, Madam. It's really a pleasure to be over here. Ah. Uh, Professor Dr. Sanjukta Baduri, Chairperson of the ITPI Women's Forum, and she is Head of the Department of Urban and Regional Planning School of Planning and Architecture. Madam Rashmi Sharma Yadav, ITS, Additional DCP, North District, Delhi Police. Madam Sarika Panda Bhatt, Director and Sindharo, Co-Founder co of Rahavili Foundation Society of Safe Gurgaon and Security Women Safety. Madam Promita Rai, she will be joining us shortly. Director, Housing and Urban Project Mix, Delhi Development Authority. Professor Arka Bharat, a professor from MANIT, Bhopal. And she is the Vice Chair of our Women's Forum. And Professor Dr. Sarika Bhadur, Secretary, ITP Women's Forum, the Assistant Professor of the University of NIT. And of course, my colleagues, one is present over here, and one we already heard, he has given the welcome address. Mr. Pradeep Kapoor, he is the Secretary General of the Institute of Town Planners India. 
And Shri Odanka, he is here, present here. He is the former secretary of that. Majority of the members from outside, Madam, not from the Delhi, our institutions scattered to the whole area. And that is why we organize this army. Uh, Participants are online, more are, more are online and offline, and ladies and gentlemen. Today we gather here to discuss uh, the subject safety of women in cities, a very important subject to which we are going to deal with today. I started searching for uh, how do we achieve the safety as far as the women's safety is concerned in our city and all these things. So I started going through the literature and I came across with the two issues. The first issue is, uh, which is very important, that almost I have seen in all most of the paper that women do not feel safe in the cities. That is what every uh, paper I am telling you, maybe United Nations paper or maybe the SDGs also. So they say, are saying that the women are not feeling safe as far as the cities are concerned. Second very important issue which I have also noted, growing gender so these are the two issues. Then I started applying that what is the problem as far as the cities are concerned. When the cities are not safe for the women, does it mean that can I derive the inference that they are safe for the villages? They are safe for the rural areas because you are not getting that much complaint. The complaint you are getting from the cities as far as the uh, women harassments are concerned or from the rural areas. Then that is a really a subject matter because. All of them, those who are living in the rural areas, those who are living in the city areas, they are the Indians, they have got the Indian culture. Then the moment they migrate from the rural areas to the city areas, why the hell they become so violent? What is, what is the problem? So the, really, there is the issue which requires to be really discussed, deliberated. And then we see that what if, if it is not happening in the rural areas, what are that specific aspects? Which, which really bind them not to do this crime and when the moment they migrate to the uh, cities, why the hell they are doing all this crime? That is what is required to be discussed and of course, we will be requesting our schools and all these things who are teaching the traffic and transportation and at the PhD level also and the postgraduate level also to really study that what, what is this particular aspect. Second one is the growing gender gap. This is what almost all the papers I have seen study meaning. So is there really a gap, gap after the gender is concerned? And then I have studied the sex ratio of the India. The sex ratio of the India is higher in the world. Uh, uh, I will give the figures also. As far as the sex ratio of India is concerned, it is 1.06a. That it means for 1,068 males, 100 females are there. For 100, 1,000 females, the males are 1,068 only. So almost... There is no that much gap between the men and women as far as the number is concerned. Secondly, if I give the world figure, it is 1.06. It means for 1,016 men uh, or uh, for 1,000 female as far as the world figures are. So we have the sex is concerned so that gap, number of gap is not that much really pronounced as far as the India is concerned. Then in spite of that, why these crimes are happening? Because that gap is not there as the physical numbers are concerned. Gap is more in the social disparities as well. And that is what the problems as far as why this is happening. I, I feel that's my personal opinion. Social disparities are there and that really creates a problem. I will share a few of the uh, few, few of the statistics. As for the US, United States research told that two four two women uh, experience sexual harassment in public places. These, these are not as far as far India is concerned, but these are coming from the United States. We say that the law and order is very good as far as the United States is concerned, but two-thirds of the women as far as the United States are concerned, experiencing that the sexual harassment happens in the public places as far as the United States are concerned. If I go to the example of the Dublin, Dublin, 36% of the women felt that they are unsafe while walking in their own neighborhood. That is Dublin. We are, I am not giving the figures of I am not saying that it should not happen in the area. It should happen in the area. It should not. These are figures related with the other countries also. If it is happening in the other countries, why it is happening in our country? That is what is required to really study and see and then appropriate measures are concerned. Then next, the of countries, the United Kingdom. 93% of the female in the United Kingdom carry 
uh, are fear to wait in for the tramps in the night and hardly 53 percent change from the fear, 93 percent fear with females. So that is not the problem as for the United Kingdom instance in India. Uh, females in the night, they are very much afraid of entering in the bus where the males are already sitting. So that is what the problem as far as India is concerned. Uh, in this reference, what the United Nations has done that the, the first five cities were selected uh, for the global flagship program of safe cities program. Five cities were, uh, were selected. The first one is the Quito in Ecuador, Cairo in Egypt, New Delhi in India, Port Moresby in New, uh, New Guiana, and Clinton in the Kagila in uh, Rwanda. There are so many issues which has really emerged. As far as this particular study is concerned, because these five cities were selected uh, initially, you know, the, as a flow, global flagship program is concerned, from the safe cities is concerned, from the point of um, safety to the women is concerned. I'm not going to do that because rather these speakers are there, they are more likely than me as far as this particular athlete is concerned. So I will leave it at that. I have got the figures on that also. But then I will leave it at that. But then the question comes to your mind. Can we achieve women's safety through the planning interventions? Is it possible to achieve the women's safety? Maybe not 100%, but maybe the few percent. At least it will facilitate the human safety. So how do we do? Can we change our, our standards, rules and regulations? For example, I will put one example. As for the street lights are concerned, distance between the two poles, if you take into the exercise, in between the two poles, already there is a dark. So can we really see Provide our standard and provide the more electric force in between that so that the whole street in the night is totally lit. So that is what the problem is there. So that particular standards are required to be seen and review. The second aspect comes to my mind because even though you have provided the electric force, nobody bothers as far as the maintenance is concerned. A year, a month together, the, 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 the buzz are not replaced. So how can we improve as far as the maintenance is also concerned? That is the second aspect. Third one is the mishap. Don't tell us the warning that the mishap is going to happen in that particular area. And that is why it is really essential not only to the make the provision, but also essential to really maintain the infrastructure reason which we already provided. It is not only important to provide the infrastructure, but that infrastructure is required to be maintained so that whenever mishap happens, it will not give you the warning. All of a sudden it comes. So definitely you have to. 24 by 7, you have to revive, uh, we have to provide as the maintenance is concerned. Third thing, which, uh, which planning intervention in the sense, I have seen the compound walls of so many buildings and the places which are so high that there is no visibility is concerned. So if you wanted to walk near that particular wall, the one gets upgrade whether because the visibility is lost and what is happening on the other side of the wall. Who the bloody is sitting on that side and really targeting us? So can we not devise certain norms and standards, the height of that particular building or height of the compound wall I'm talking about, that should be, at least the visibility should be there. So that the people will be in a position, something doing something harmful to some, some lady or maybe even to the gentleman. So one, one can notice that they can come for their assistance. But that is what I am seeing that the six feet walls are being constructed. In my neighborhood also, in my ne next door also, six feet wall is constructed and it is really not possible to visualize what is happening or what is going to happen in the future. And as far as our parks and playgrounds are also concerned, they are not properly lit in the night. So people are afraid of walking or going for the walk in the night. What to talk of the ladies, even gentlemen are don't dare to walk in that. And so what is the alternative? To my mind, the alternative appears to be the gender uh, responsive urban planning is required to be seen whenever you Repair development plan or the master plan, generally we don't give that much particular importance as far as the gender responsive urban planning is concerned and that is what is required to come. I, I, I will I would like to talk over here to the honorable speakers. Thank you, Madam. For me. I will now thank you. Thank you, Dr. Um, uh, for for uh, setting the context and the, uh, putting across the importance of the theme, I would request Dr. Sarika Bahadur to introduce the speakers. Sarika is the secretary of IT and the faculty of VNIT Nagpur. 
Sarita, please introduce the Thank you, ma'am. And a very good afternoon to everyone here. Uh, I take this opportunity to introduce our key speaker. The first key speaker is Dr. Rashmi Sharma Yadav, a mother, a cop, a wife. Danip, Officer 2009 batch, posted in DCP traffic, government of in Delhi, and in charge of additional DCP 1, North District and Cybercrime Investigation Cell. Dr. Yadav previously was an in charge of DSP Cyber Cell Department of Chandigarh Police. She is being associated with various programs like Nirbhay and Shagit, which deals with awareness of self-defense among school-going children. She is also part of Himat Plus app, a women's safety solution, relentless effort for making the city safe day by day. We welcome you, ma'am, and we also thank you for. Uh, your acceptance for this Women's Day Forum. I would like to introduce the second speaker, Ms. Sarika Pandabhat, Director Nagaro. Ms. Sarika Pandabhat is a co-founder of Rajgiri Day, India's first calf-free day campaign. Rajgiri Day was initiated in Gurugram in November 2013 with an objective to promote safe walking and cycling in Indian cities and engaging thousands of people for the campaign. Today, the concept has grown to over 70 locations across India. Ms. Bhatt is also associated with India Vision Zero, which is a road safety of pedestrian and cyclists. She's been recognized as the 40 most remarkable women in transport sector in the world. She's an architect and pursued her post-graduation in urban planning and also has a major in sociology. Currently, mom is working at NADARRO as a director. Welcome, ma'am. Now, let me take the opportunity to introduce our third speaker, Ms. Paramita Roy, Director, Housing and Urban Project Wing, Delhi Development Authority. Ms. Paramita Roy is a specialist and expert in TOD, that's Transit Oriented Development. Architect Paramita is on deputation to ISR, IRSDC, looking after the redevelopment as per national TOD policy. She is also a knowledge partner and a member of High Power Committee for Traffic Management of Delhi, Government of India, and a board member of director of Gwalior City, Smart City Development Corporation Limited, and a member of the Committee for Parking Policy constituted by Lieutenant Governor of Delhi. Architect Roy is currently serving as Director, Housing and Urban Project Wing, with a unit leading the preparation of TOD Influence Zone Plan of the Dwarka Metro Corridor, which has seven stations and 1,400 hectares of area. We welcome you, ma'am. Let me now introduce the Jefferson ITPI Women Forum, Professor Dr. Sanjukta Bahadure. She is a professor of urban planning at SPA New Delhi. At present, she is head of the Department of Urban Planning. She is a coordinator of Design Innovation Cell, Center of Urban Disaster Studies, and President Institute Innovation Council. She is the director of SPA Foundation for Innovation and Research for Social Transformation at SPA New Delhi. She has been the former Dean of Research at SPA New Delhi. She, Dr. Bhaduri has done her bachelor's in architecture, master's in city planning from IIT Kharagpur and PhD from SPA New Delhi. She has an experience of 36 years in professional research and teaching. And she, her research work is mainly concentrated on urban planning and environmental planning. She has two online courses on the Swayam platform, city and metropolitan planning, and other the one is urban disaster risk management and climate resilient development. She has two patents, systems and methods for local area planning and application for state vendors and town vending committee. We welcome all the key speakers. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Saika. Uh, and uh, for uh, introduction of the speakers. Now, I think there's a the time has come to listen from Dr. Mishri um, and uh, please um, yeah, 
they would like to introduce, or rather, they have already given the introductions. So I would uh, request uh, one of our esteemed speakers, uh, Mr. Rashmi uh, Sharma, please uh, let us hear from you yes. what it is from a protective point of view. What, what, how do you think that what should be the challenges or what are the challenges and please share your experiences with us. Over to you. My greetings to everyone and indeed it is my pleasure to come here and share my views on uh, the perspective on how we can really do something uh, tangible about safety of women in steels. And, and why is it really important to have safety of women? Why we keep on discussing uh, these topics? It's very important to understand the cause and the reason for discussing on these topics. Because why the women uh, have is, has become so important. And uh, I would like to uh, share certain things. The uh, United Nations way back in uh, like after this globalization concept came in 1990, United Nations, they started many schemes uh, with regard to women empowerment and even other schemes where the uh, lesser ones, the uh, those who were deprived of basic amenities could be given better uh, things and better life opportunities. And they realized that without women, the things are not moving. Why is it that if we are launching a particular scheme, why is it that it is not reaching the maximum? So, and finally they came to the uh, conclusion that we have to include, involve women. We cannot do without them. Our economy cannot move ahead without them. We have to keep them secure at their household. We have to keep them safe outside their household. We have to keep them safe in the buses if they travel, whether they are traveling by road, by any mode, whether they are sitting in the school or they're going to colleges, coming back home. So they have to be secure. Only then they can work for us. You see, this is this was the main reason. Now I would just like to share a small view because uh, the other day I was just reading the other people's view on it and try to explore. Like, why are we discussing it uh, all through the world? So there is a small advertisement, and I would like if uh, you can just play that with you. I just shared the video. Okay, uh, we can do that later. Uh, forward. So, uh, I'll continue from here. I mean, just imagine a girl is sitting at a bus stop or standing at a bus stop alone. And when she looks right or left, she finds that there are a couple of other men and it is so much dark. And she still has to wear for another hour to get the bus. I mean, just imagine that scenario. I guess uh, the video is there. We can play that video. So, you know, get a better. Please put the volume on. Hey, yeah. The volume. The volume. The volume. Mm
So this is how we can plan our neighborhood. This is a very small thing, but when you think of it, just think of it, the woman walking on the sidewalks. There are sidewalks available, there are paths, crosswalks. We don't have to push through the street. We don't have to cross the road where the traffic is just coming over you. So these are little aspects that work a long way, work in a long way to establish the safety of a woman. Now, what else we can do and how, like, why should societies value women? Societies need to be more considerable, considerate the women in all aspects. So we need to include them, involve them. We have to involve women at all the stages, whether it is at the planning stage, whether it is at the policy making stage, whether we are designing some transportation, whether we are design, designing some parks, some neighborhood in housing, we have to include women. It is very important because the perspective they give is very unique. They think of many things. And if you see the figures of disaster in the cities which have recently faced disaster, the Turkey, or even for that matter, uh, the war that has been going on, you see that women are left behind or they are the sufferers, they die, they are the ones because the men are able to cross over. So we have to ensure that our cities where if any disaster strikes has the capability of saving the women, the children, because they are the ones who suffer in such disasters. You can see the figures of recent disasters and you will agree with me. Now, if we have to include women uh, at planning stage and also at the implementation stage also. I, uh, I would like to share one personal experience. So I was in another city and then the city leader, uh, three leaders in fact, were women, right? From the political personality, the one who was leading the MCD or the one was the city mayor, she was a lady. And then the Lady SSP of the city. See, so all four segments were being done by the women. Now, they developed this concept of parks to another level where the parks were being managed by the local women in the neighborhood. What do you want? You want a light in the center? Okay, you want that the street should be, these gates should be open and one gate should be closed or this gate should not be closed. So these small things, they make an impact. And uh, so I saw like how the women were thinking to make better place 
they uh, included many exercising equipment for the women in the park and then the women were encouraged to come and sit in the park you see so we are creating that space where women can discuss with each other we are allowing them to communicate these are small factors but they ultimately help to curb crime also believe me because they become the eyes and ears of that neighborhood and then they also discuss that i am having certain issue at my household or i am having certain issue at my workplace so they guide each other so women have to give strength to each other also besides whatever activities we are doing for the gender sensitization we want to include all the genders we have to include all the genders but at the same time women should support each other and this all aspect has to be taken in, in the town planning works so how a park is able to uh, give this outcome you see so far reaching effects of that planning of a park has given this thing now the most other important part is the role of law enforcement agents so for safe city for uh, safety of the women law law enforcement agency have are including women they are including women whether they are the victims or whether they are the participants in discussing the uh, benefits of uh, community how the community can police itself how the community can help police in policing so these are the features and even in by traffic issues are there we sit with the women we discuss okay what do you want how can we help so they give us the ideas we can cross this street we can close this street we can open this street we can be made one way so this is how women are coming and uh, above all so whatever we are designing public transport urban parks footpaths sidewalks or whether the safety applications are there like human plus applications is there i mean it is a very sad thing that still in a population where it is almost two crs in delhi hardly two to three lakh women are using that application so women have to have this this awareness has to reach to the level of women the last woman in a household that these are the things which are there for you we are planning the such kind of buses there are planning buttons in the buses now smart city concept is going in. what is this smart city actually smart city is yes. just it is not just for the uh, making your life easy but for securing the life of a citizen and in that whether it is a burglar's call like how you protect your house from the burglary or even if it is the urban housing now uh, sir as sir was discussing about like why is it that uh, in villages there is less of these uh, you know these fights violence compared to the city simple reason because we are painting the issue of crowding the housing is crowded in cities so we need to take this concept of site and parks to next level we need to in, ensure that all the parks are maintained in the neighborhood because by planning it has to be incorporated i think that is one of the bigger and yes transportation lot much work is going on in this field of transportation and uh, other components like we are uh, having lot of cameras in lighting dark stretches have to be there at work like on regular basis and there should be proper lighting no covering of the space with the camera so that at least when a woman walks she feels she say just imagine like the in a school bus or in a normal bus a last uh, passenger is a lady just think what she might be thinking when she's traveling so we have to take all the perspectives and yes uh, the policing has been trying to uh, include all the segments of the society whether they are senior citizens or women and or other stakeholders in making the city not only smart but safe so i think uh, with this i would like to close my topic and i'm open to any discussions and any queries because uh, i think people in the audience they are more experienced in down planning but yes we have to consider women not only in planning 
and implementation. And there's one thing I would like to share. Whatever planning or implementation is going on, we need to have assess it later on. Yeah. What impact it is doing? What impact it is having? Whether we are planning this kind of a street or this kind of a housing, what impact is it is having on the society? It has to be a continuous concept, not just you uh, make something and you leave it there. You have to see the after effects so that we are able to design better. That's thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you very much. In fact, you have um, you have raised uh, so many pertinent issues, and I think it's so relatable to planners. You have raised the importance of women. Why women the women are important? As women, we can get in everything in every field. It, women needs to be empowered, and it's, I think the whole world is trying to. We are trying to. I mean, uh, there's a lot of discussion and. Uh, work also on empowering women. So, and um, uh, I would um, uh, suggest that. Uh, so, after, um, uh, and then you know, she said that that not only planning and design, but also implementation. How can women be a part of it, and what needs to be done, and how? And a very important point is about communities. How do we really um, take in uh, the our communities' role in? In making our city safe, and about how women can themselves become, um, they can share and they can support, they can guide each other and form a rather team, so that that would really help in uh, making uh, the city safe. So um, instead of waiting for somebody to make them safe, they also can also uh, be given their inputs and they can also um, uh, make the city safe and. The impact of planning on society is such a very important point that we, what will we do about the, how the society benefits and how the, and especially the women, the, the other, maybe the elderly, the other stakeholders also, how they can benefit. So without being a planner, you have raised very, very important issues for, for a planner to think. And uh, I would suggest that uh, we can hear all our speakers and then we can we have a question and answer session rather than open house. And if there's anything, uh, anything then uh, in the chat box, you can put your comments. So right now, I think we uh, uh, should go ahead with the next speaker. And um, our next speaker is Sarika Pandabhat. In fact, Sarika Pandabhat was uh, is a student of us. She did her master's in environmental planning from School of Planning and Architecture, and Sarika has had been introduced. So I welcome Sarika uh, to uh, speak to us and to speak to the um, audience as to um, what is what are her experiences in this area of women's safety, uh, which is you know if women is safe, then women is empowered. Rather, in, that is also one way of looking at things. So women's empowerment, when we talk of Women's Day, International Women's Day, so which we could, uh, I mean, eight, of course, was the day, but uh, that's, that's how it's a one way of, uh, one way of uh, giving importance to the woman that yes, it's her day. So that means that it's not one day which is her day, but maybe the entire uh, should be her days. So anyway, we, I reach to Sarika to um, speak on her. Over to you, Sarika. Uh, thank you, thank you, ma'am. Uh, sorry, I just give me a minute. Uh, I think I opened a wrong slide, but I can go ahead with this only, no problem. I think there is some problem in my video. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for this opportunity, ma'am. And uh, um, uh, this is a very, very important subject that we are talking about. How, you know, this has been years now that we are talking about actually that how to make our cities more safer for and more inclusive for women. And that powerful video that has been sent by Ms. Rashmi is exactly what we need. You know, the perception of safety in a city while you are loitering, walking or coming out from a club, it should not be, you know, that the city, that the city should be welcoming you. 
for example, that small street vendor is a perception of safety, not the CCTV cameras. This is how we need to plan our cities. Um, I think I'm stopping my video. There is some issue in my video, I think. Mm, uh, so, okay. Uh, so, um, just skipping this, I think it's a wrong PPT I have forwarded or said. So cities, we are talking about cities and uh, uh, how women is safe or unsafe in a city. So we all have come from various places. I have come from a very, very small town, in fact, from a village from Orissa to Delhi for study. And you know, this is how many of us migrate to a city for our education, for our job, uh, for multiple other opportunities, right? So we come to a city for opportunities, for improving our quality of life. But what happens? These are the challenges. When we land in a city, so it comes with a lot of challenges. It is ju it's just not, don't come with opportunities only. So there is a problem in your health facility or housing or, uh, you know, um, basic amenities and accessible, accessibility to your basic infrastructure problems are here. But most important, most important is safety. This is where we all, uh, you know, every day what we feel, you know, the perception of safety or the way our city treat us as you not know, women, wo any any gender i must say now these days even it's very difficult for us for our city uh, in fact uh, it is not just girl or a boy now in fact many family i know that they don't send their boys also uh, out alone this is the this is like it's become such a big problem it's not become only a woman issue but of course for mostly it is for women uh, for example, in our time, we used to cycle to school, we used to cycle to market places, friends place. We don't allow our children, either it is boy or girl, to go alone by cycling or walking or using public transport system alone. Right? This is, this is the problem we are facing in our city. So safety is the biggest challenge that we face every day. First, I'll talk a little bit about road safety. As you know, we all know that, you know, uh, 1.5 lakh people dying every year due to road traffic crisis and almost 1 million family getting impacted. It is not just the people dying, but people getting injured and how it is impacting women. So for example, 50%, 50 to 60% of these deaths are uh, with adults, men who are from age group from 13 to 45, the mostly the only breadwinner of the family. And once they get disabled, so think about the burden on the woman. The, he, she has to run the family, she has to take care of the children, she has to take care of the health issue of the care, care take of the breadwinner or whatever. So it's again a socio-economic burden to a woman in the family. It is not just this number, people dying or getting injured. It's one of the biggest socio-economic burden to the society and especially to the woman. It is not just about the economic burden, it is about the mental health burden also. Second, women's safety, we discussed some numbers, you know, as worldwide, one in every three women experience physical or sexual violence, multiple places. And of course, we, if we forget about the domestic violence, in public places, violence is so high, so high, especially in our cities. That's why the woman workforce is very low. That's why so many children drop out from the school in very early age after hitting puberty. There are multiple other things to tell about, you know, why our city planning is not welcoming at all. Still that we are in 21st century, but we are still think on, we still think on that, uh, you know, old school of urban planning and building more roads, widening roads, gated community, CCTV cameras, that is not, that is not going to solve the problem. That is creating more barrier in our society. Second, again, in 2017 data, I don't have the latest data, 3.6 lakh cases get reported against, you know, on violence against women cases as per IPC. 
and then india almost is known as one of the most dangerous country sorry to say we like you know we feel bad about it and we know that there are other countries also we don't feel like women are not safe but let's talk about our own country like you know most important thing is when you are stepping out from your house for a woman and what is the important thing is the commuting part you know everybody has to commute either to school for socializing even a housewife go for dropping kids to tuition or socializing or shopping or multiple other other activities a woman do and that's why you must have seen that maximum uh, maximum um, public transport has been used by women you know they do multiple trips in a day and our basic principle what basic practice of addressing this is addressing this uh, safety of women or children is you know legislation we have laws of course we have very strong laws we have enforcement agency as ma'am is part of the enforcement agency and police is there so uh, for through cctv camera or through this we try to enforce safety right and then we try to educate people we try like you know we are trying to educate people from decades both on road safety women safety issue telling about respecting women women empowerment but are we achieving what we have targeted uh, for me it's a no big no because this is not the only thing we need to say what we need to do is we need to make our city safer by design how we can design our city the in in very inclusive way welcoming way the streets vibrant street that is more important when we are talking about women safety so as i said vibrant street everybody is a pedestrian okay if you own a car also we walk but if you see the quality of pedestrian infrastructure in our city is beyond like you know it's not just bad it's worse you know we hardly it's the most neglected infrastructure in our city anything that we need to encroach we encroach first footpath we need to put a billboard with and cross footpath street vendors parking like you know rows of cars will be parked in a footpath then our zebra crossing is ending nowhere like multiple many many design issues if you just go and look around in your neighborhood itself you know and as i said that you know people who are getting killed are these pedestrians you know that is the problem because we are not prioritizing them and as again the most important thing is out of this if like you know people who are walking 48% are women so that's why treating street is so so important when we are talking about women safety so women are walking women are using public transport so that's why our focus need to be improving street infrastructure creating more vibrant street when we want to address women safety issue accessible mobility again only 3% people drive own a car in our like to drive to work in our cities but 99% of our infrastructure is developed for them you know and we keep on building more we only solution we are thinking as though there is a traffic jam so let's build more road no one in the world nowhere in the world has solved the problem of traffic jam by building more roads we need a paradigm shift of improving public transport system walking and cycling infrastructure that is the only way okay we are a developing country there will be more car ownership people will buy car but it doesn't mean that for every small trip you need to use that and again what about people who are who have no choice rather than you know walking cycling or using public transport system who are almost 50 to 60% of our population again 18% women you know use bus transport even in delhi i think it's much more it has increased to almost 30 40% so what about last mile connectivity as i said a lit street when a person getting down from a bus stop the again the perception of safety is so bad you get down from a bus stop you don't have eye on street there is a dark street and you need to you need to walk to your home right after getting down from a bus but the last mile infrastructure is so poor in our cities if we have a bad good public transport system think about 
in and around your metro station can a woman walk alone in the night no cctv's cameras again i said it's a after crime or it's, it's like this but what we need is eye on street we need vendors we need more human interaction to make you feel safe so that is how we need to plan again when we are talking about public transport system also so that inclusive space in our country you know global norm is you know we need at least 20 square meters open space or public space as per residence what we have in mumbai 1.28 Bangalore to Chennai zero point eight one, and Delhi NCR is even less than this. Is this the quality of life, the smart city we are looking out of? No, most of the streets, except you know the elite, for example, South Delhi or Luton's Delhi or other, are properly lit. Proper the streets are vibrant. Not I will not say vibrant. I don't feel safe in Luton's Delhi walking alone, because if it's a wide road car centric car centric road and i don't feel safe there although i feel safe in karol bagh or chandni chowk because there are a lot of people around it around me so this is how we need to design our public space when we are talking about women safety as a planner for example in the same video you have th saw three the video shared by rashmi ji was you know three parts different thing you know a girl is jogging went to a public park which was not lit and once it has been lit you saw so many women on the park right the small small intervention how we can improve in our planning that is very very important so this is how we make a great public space use an activity a lot of activity we need around our street we don't need this you know highways express ways inside our city gurgaon is the worst example i must say almost all around gurgaon you will see express and highways and high speed corridors that is the focus building more roads which is making more and more unsafe not just in terms of road safety in terms of women safety also you will not find women after evening in any street walking or loitering or talking you know that was what we were doing in our childhood till our adolescent but not not my kids anymore then comfort and image you know it has to be green you know properly shaded seating area toilets uh, you know drinking water facility all these things access and linkage to your you know neighborhood transit walkability from house to your uh, you know works place this is important then social beauty and in that you need market places you know again uh, uh, street vendors uh, multiple other things so these are this is how you make a great place where not just women but all everyone children everyone feeling safe so for these are few things that we need to incorporate in our planning and improve as a planner where we have lot of toolkits we have lot of you know uh, guidelines but none of the city is following it in our their planning and implementation that is the huge gap we have right now so flexible and dynamic our street our marketplace should be flexible it should be dynamic it has it should be mixed culture for example you go what we are developing are malls mosque is not accessible to everyone and it's not a public space so open and green space more parks more playgrounds more public libraries that is what we need in our city rather than only malls and in gurgaon only liquor shops you know that is the problem then promote active and inclusive sustainable mobility we need to be independent as a woman right for example if there is a vehicle in a house it always belongs to the man how women are going to commute so we need walkable walkable city we can cycle i am giving my own example when i i was in delhi i was going to spa from marani bagh i was so independent we were having bus system going from hostel to college delhi still has better and makes a woman independent but when i shifted to gurgaon there was no public transport system there was no informal public transport and i don't like driving i after working on road safety area i really feel unsafe when but and i don't like driving also it's very stressful you know people are honking this that 
I bought a cycle and I started cycling around in the city after 20 years. And then I realized that, you know, how safe it is. And, but how cycling is making me, you know, giving me that wings and making me free to go around the city. That was, that was my only thing that was having, giving me that freedom to go around the city. So I still cycle and that is my way of commute most of the time. Then again, uh, if you see most of this domestic helps in our city, either walk or cycle, what about them? Are they not part of our city planning? Why we include them? Why we are not including them when we are designing something? That is very important. Then climate responsive infrastructure. You know, this more roads, more this is creating more disaster. Like, you know, February, we are having heat waves now. What are we looking for? So these, these are very important. It is all correlated when we, if we are designing the city for women and children, we are designing for everyone. We are making it safe for everyone. We are making it vibrant for everyone. This, I'm just browsing it, how this tentative Rahagiri creates this vibrancy. Here you see so many women early morning dancing on a street who, who imagines that, you know, and all class, all section, all age. This is, we need to just not, our cities are right now built for only for abled male body. But what we need is every, every age group, every abled human being should be, you know, having that freedom of commuting in a city or, uh, you know, enjoying a street. We create this space. You can see the expression, everyone is happy. So again, we demonstrated how to have a equity in your street. You know, if you have a car, cycle, pedestrians, public transport, we demonstrate such things. I'm just skipping this. This is in Karol Bagh, we organized a night Nahagiri and you see full of women, men together till morning, midnight till morning, we're enjoying the street. So what we, uh, last thing I just want to say is that, you know, these are glimpses, how say it is midnight, two o'clock, how women are active on the street. This is what we need. Again, so talking about SGDs, we are talking, you know, there's a SDG, gender equality, these, that, but are we practicing? It is a big, big question. So what exactly we need is, you know, if you design streets for cars, you will get cars. Or if you are designing a public space, a city for people, you will get people. So I really like that video, ma'am. And uh, if you can share it with me, this is an amazing, impactful video. Again, whatever I said, it is there in that video. For example, you know, that park, again, I am talking. It was lit. It was accessible and you saw so many women. So this is what you need. You design space for people, you will get people. So I want to conclude here. So that's it. Thank you so much. City should be. And we can make our city safer by design. How to streets, vibrant streets, through our walking and cycling infrastructure and to make the city, uh, although we all know that we have guidelines uh, and we have uh, we have written paper, but implementation of these really ensuring that whatever we we have while we working out the guidelines, whatever we intended, or whatever the guidelines intended, should be become should be implemented and. Uh, uh, it impact the um, women, children, women and children. So it is really hard that uh, I did like many in your writing. This made many of the um, let's say the points which make the cities um, which should make the cities safe and for everybody. And we're looking at uh, not for women in uh, high income groups but for women in the informal sector and how to how to really make every woman uh, safe so it is not about only that it has to be for
for high income groups or medium or middle income groups, but also for the low income groups. So there, we can work out many things. If if there is a way, yes, there is a way. So let us see how we can take it forth. And though we know that uh, what needs to be done, but how it is to be done and where it is to be done, that is becomes important for us. And um, we would, uh, because we are waiting for Paramita um, uh, Roy to come in, she's uh, just held up for some important, uh, some, this is also important, but she's held up due to some reason. So I would uh, uh, request that if there are any questions for um, for Karam um, uh, Rashmi and uh, for uh, Sarika Pandavat, so maybe uh, from the audience, you can please raise those questions and then we can um, take up Paramita when she come, joins us. So I think if there, if there are any questions, Please, uh, you can raise your hand and we can take your questions. And uh, any chat box, take now. Any, anything in the chat box? Hand. Anybody has any questions? Anything? Yeah, you can speak. Yes. Yeah, Bhavna Jha, if you want to ask any question, you can unmute and ask the question. Okay, so am I audible? Yes. Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, so my question is, uh, basically my thesis is based on city at night. And I'm doing strategies for Jaipur city and uh, gender inclusivity is one of the major aspects in my thesis. So during primary survey, when I went to the city, I found that there is an extreme low workforce of women in terms of commercial uh, activities, like the shops, I uh, did the primary survey and where I specifically asked how many women employees do you have in your shops? And the numbers, the findings were really uh, low. So there were hardly, if they are hiding 10 uh, employees, the number of women employment was either one or two or none at all. And uh, looking at the crime rate, I also found out the crime rate in Jaipur has increased by 25%, 30% for certain crimes and women and crime against women like harassment or rapes has also been on increase. During, uh, then I also did the nighttime hotspots analysis comparing the crime in daytime and nighttime. So I found out the areas which are relatively active like the wall city of Jaipur or uh, the all the uh, cultural assets like the ports, the crime hotspot at night is much more higher. So I just wanted to ask like uh, from real life examples, how can we enhance gender inclusivity? Uh, so these were all the public spaces, but the involvement of women or representation of women was really low in terms of maybe visitors or maybe the providers of services. So how can we increase that at a city level, like various levels, how city functions like a local level to, uh, intermediate level and the city level. So basically this was my question. She please you can, and then Sarika can come in and respond. I think uh, you are asking how we can increase women. So uh, this question we can ask the uh, women groups that are present in that particular city, try to reach out to the women in the parks, talk to people, talk to other people also besides women that why aren't you allowing women to come forward work in shops and what is the hitch what is the reason so we have to speak up and then we have to uh, take the perspectives which they will give see the point is one thing is what we are actually doing and the other more uh, important thing is the perception perception of what is being done on ground and how the people are perceiving, how the society is perceiving. Are they really perceiving any changes? Yes, does the, uh, if a family is walking on the street and they feel it, uh, the street is well lighted, you, you, you try, you'll see that the other day the woman might be coming alo alone at night in the park. So this is how uh, to include women, you need to talk to women. Talk to the women in parks, 
in schools, in colleges, reach out to them at workplaces and even door to door surveys you can do so that you will get a better picture of that particular city, the flavor of that city, that why they are lacking, why are they not coming forward. And yes, you need to work on the perception part also. Thank you. Okay, Sarika, maybe if you please respond to Arna's question or rather her. her uh, yeah, okay. so Havna, uh, did you ask why there, like why there is so less uh, women workforce in the shops? So because that is very important, then you can address the, if you don't know the problem, then how you are going to address, uh, how you come out with the solution, right? So is in general, in almost every city, is this is the same problem. For example, uh, if in a particular shops or a particular street vendor, you will find women, or otherwise you will not find women in uh, business houses. And uh, it's a typical problem. One is again, as I said that, you know, the commuting and the perception, like, you know, is that market very welcoming in the, uh, you know, um, nighttime to the women workforce? How many women are shopping in the night? So this is, this is very, very important uh, thing to observe and like, you know, and uh, if, uh, during your questionnaire or during your study uh, and uh, again it's the same problem planning how we are designing a public space how we are welcoming the women uh, into the workforce that is again second thing so first you can you if you can find out why is uh, you know that will be important thing to find out the solution Thank you. Is there any other? Thank you, Bhavna. I think uh, you you have got some pointers, and you have uh, uh, your your clarity has come into certain points. So, um, is there any other uh, question right, uh, right now? Yeah, Kanchan Gandhi Mounsu is speak some question. Please uh, unmute and ask. Okay, my question was uh, specifically with regard to increasing uh, sexual violence against children. So mostly newspapers are now talking about uh, sexual rapes of girl child and all. So I think we also need to reflect on specific strategies for making the city child, uh, uh, I mean for child safety. part of this, there have been, I think there are a lot of work going at various levels. Uh, we are talking of time friendly cities, child friendly smart cities, infants, toddlers, and caregiver friendly neighborhoods. So things are getting done at various levels in order to sensitize, make people aware and uh, make professionals aware so they can incorporate them in their in the design and of neighborhoods and at the city level also. So there are uh, there are many initiatives that are getting done. And I would do this if uh, Russian man has anything to say or Sarika has anything to say um, in addition to what I uh, with rising uh, sexual crimes against the children. One thing is sure that uh, uh, this has been there in the society earlier also. It is not that it is uh, coming up right now. The main reason is the people are becoming better informed about these things. And even children are getting aware in the schools and colleges, like sessions are going there, how to make them aware. The school buses are being taken care of. The school staff is being taken care of. And then at the uh, public places also, uh, there are... Uh, Awareness sessions with regard to child security and uh, child safety. And uh, yes, designing and like uh, infrastructure. One main uh, thing which I have seen in, at certain areas is about the urban housing. Uh, in, uh, you can see people who, like migrants who are shifting to cities, they are living in one room and 10 or 12 of them are staying in a single room. And over there, yes, there are episodes of crime against child. And uh, so we meet, we are, I don't know what the government has planned to do about that uh, urban housing and how we are thinking of the migrants who are coming to the from the villages. So the villages are this kind of thing out there. There are places to sleep, to play. Yeah, children can go out and play and sleep. 
participants that crowding is one major cause. Uh, we need to continue in the getting new innovations, ideas, and uh, take the consider the fears of the parents so that we are able to make this uh, like develop it a better infrastructure. Thank you. Sarita, you have to uh, want to respond? Um, it's the same thing actually. What I presented is, you know, this is how you need to why how you can create a safe space for children by creating safe public space, safe street. This is this is the only way. There is no other way actually. Uh, we cannot keep on building highways and seeing that that oh, our children will be feeling safe. No. So more public space, more accessible public space, inclusive public space, and vibrant streets. These are the things, uh, you know, where if not women and ch uh, children, but everyone feels safe. So uh, there is no other way, actually. Thank you, Sarita. And I think now we can, uh, uh, our third uh, speaker is here, Paramita Roy. Uh, she, uh, she had already been introduced. So I would request Mr. Kadarkar to please welcome her. Sir was my Parmita to uh, yes to uh, uh, share her her viewpoints regarding uh, women safety and what needs to be done in cities how to ensure through design and uh, through various experiences and how she has she put forth what they have what uh, they have done and what needs to be done in our cities. Okay, Parmita, over to you. Uh, I don't have time to do this. Yes, yes. Before I show a few slides, I don't really have a big presentation, just maybe four or five slides, but I wanted to just generally talk about this issue because uh, it's been now 15 years working in Delhi and uh, working inside the uh, setup. So uh, I have to just share that. Women's safety, you know, it uh, comes to very basic things. Like, I remember when we came to DDA, for Dankar Sir, we came to DDA. So, I, I had just come from the private sector and very good corporate offices and obviously, you know, good infrastructure. Even Indian corporate offices, they have very good infrastructure. The first thing I faced when I came the first day was the quality of the toilet. And uh, I have asked so many of my friends who uh, I keep asking, do we have talented people? They say, what time is it? Do you join the government? First of all, they say, they don't go to the toilet. We go to the government office. We go to the government office. We go to the government office. They say, the girl's toilet is on the third floor. They go to the right turn. They will be locked in the lock. For whatever reasons. So it starts from there. Then, uh, Things like accessibility. Now, uh, Vikas Vinar luckily was accessible, but uh, just having to walk. Simple things like Vikas Vinar ka jo entry tha, uh, complex ka. So, uske do gates hain. Ek hain jo road ki taraf hai, aur ek gate hain jo parking lot ki taraf. Hamesha parking lot ki taraf ki gate khuli rehti hai, aur jo road ki taraf ki gate hai, wo band rehti thi. Shayad abhi bhi band hai. Wo hume, as far as LG saab se baat karke, wo gate khutani pash. Kyunki I used to come by bus to work for the first five years of my life in DDA. I used to use public transport to, uh, to come. So when you get on the bus, you have to enter the bus in 500 meters in the cold, you have to enter. Why? So, think about common sense. Is it easier for a pedestrian to take a detour? Or is it for an easy, easier for a gadi wala sitting in an AC car to take that 100 meter detour? Because we always think that the gadi wala has to get up right in front of the steps. And the pedestrian, he has to figure it out. Who can go and get into it. So, and these are all the things that I have done now that I have now, age has caught up. And, you know, I am in fact sitting on a 
really good cushion because I have bone problems and I have various other problems. And it's a fact of life that auto ko health problems jada after a certain age. It is a law of nature. We have problems in walking, sitting, and soon you know people drop out of the workforce. And hamlo, wo aap dekhenge ki auto ko jaldi ghar jana hota hai. And you know generally it's a part of jokes ki aare ye to aati hain aur chali chali jaati hain. Deer se aati hain aur jaldi chali jaati hain. Main sach bolu, main bhi deer se aati hain. Kyu? Kyunki ghar mein itne kam hote hain. घर में काम होते हैं दिस इज रियालिटी ऑफ लाइफ दैट वुमेन हैव वर्क एट होम एंड दिस इज नॉट एन इशू ऑफ इट्स एन सक्सेस एस्पेक्ट वी डू हैव वर्क एट होम वी हैव टू लुक एट आई आई एम नॉट मैरिड बट आई हैव अ गुड फादर एट होम आई हैव इंटरेस्ट ऑफ होम समटाइम्स आई हैव गेस्ट एट होम सो हु टेक्स केयर ऑफ द फॉर्स सो इफ आई वाज अ मैन I don't know what I would have done if I was a single man. I'm not sure how that turned out. I'm sure they also have the same problem. But whether single or married, women always have things to take care of at home. Not just that. I'm also going to talk about something which is taboo in our society. When women have monthly problems, they have they have menstruation. We are ashamed to even talk about it. There are issues related to that. वो बस में चढ़ना उनके लिए मुश्किल हो जाता है उनके लिए ऑफिस में आठ घंटा तो बैठना मुश्किल हो जाता है टॉयलेट गंदी होती है तो दिक्कत हो जाता है नॉट ऑफ पीपल टेक वुमेन टेक टाइम ऑफ ट्यूरिंग दैट टाइम लेकिन हमारी जो लीगल फ्रेमवर्क है काम की उसमें कोई प्रावधान नहीं है जिसमें हम टाइम ऑफ ले सके अभी बहुत देशों में जैसे नेदरलैंड ऑस्ट्रेलिया दे हैव एक्चुअली ड्रॉ दीज थिंग्स इन टू द फोर दैट यू कैन गेट टाइम ऑफ वेन यू आर हैविंग दैट टाइम एंड दैट्स ए बायोलॉजिकल थिंग एंड वी नीड दैट स्पेशल केयर ऑफ अगर हम और मेरा ये मानना है कि अगर हम ये चीजें करते हैं इट डजेंट से दैट वुमेन इज वीकर इज जस्ट वुमेन इज अ डिफरेंट बायोलॉजिकल एंटिटी एंड टू गिव अर लेवल प्लेइंग फील्ड जब हम ये अंडरस्टैंडिंग रखते हैं टेबल पे तब इक्वालिटी दे रहे हैं ये जो हम स्पेशल चीजें उनके लिए अगर ध्यान रखते हैं तब वो प्लेइंग फील्ड जो है लेवल है और मैं आपको सच बताऊ मैं पंद्रह साल से मैं गवर्नमेंट में काम कर रही हूँ और मेरे जो वुमेन जो ऑफिसर्स हैं दे डिलीवर थ्री टाइम्स मोर वर्क देन माय मेन आई थिंक अगेन आई एम टेलिंग यू सिंपल फैक्ट्स ये बिल्कुल झूठ नहीं तो यू नो द बॉयज विल गो फॉर दीज लॉन्ग वॉक्स गो फॉर सीक्रेट ब्रेक्स गो फॉर दीज थिंग्स एंड हैव लॉट ऑफ डिस्ट्रैक्शंस द वुमेन विल कम मे बी फॉर सिक्स आवर्स बट दे विल वर्क विद लॉट ऑफ डेडिकेशन एंड सम ऑफ माय बेस्ट ऑफिसर्स हैव बीन थिंग सो so, uh, बस ये है आई रिमेम्बर जब मेट्रो में भी कोच रिजर्व हुआ था बहुत प्रोटेस्ट हुआ था नॉट ऑफ पीपल क्रिटिसाइज मी आल्सो एट दैट टाइम बिकॉज आई सपोर्टेड दैट बट आई आई थिंक दैट वाज द बेस्ट थिंग मैम आई डोंट नो आपका क्या ओपिनियन है लेकिन मुझे कितना डर लगता था मेट्रो में चढ़ने में इन द कॉमन इट इज अ टॉर्चर टू गेट इन टू अवर सिचुएशन और हम हम लोग ये वन से नो वाइल नहीं है ये बचपन से हम जब से स्कूल से निकले हैं तब से वो ड्रामा हमारे दिमाग में है कि हम बस में चढ़ेंगे और पता नहीं हमारे साथ क्या हो ये सच है एवरी दिल्ली की लड़की के साथ यही हुआ है मुझे कितनी बार देखा होगा मिश्रा सर ने भी वो बातें करी की थिंग्स लाइक बाउंड्री वॉल्स एंड ऑल विच हैज ग्रेजुअली कन्वर्टेड आर सिटीज इन टू एब्सोलूट क्राइम क्राइम इंटरेस्टेड प्लेसेस एंड द्वारका जैसे वंडरफुल प्लेस में भी वहां पे भी आप छह साढ़े छह के बाद आप अकेले नहीं चल सकते मैं और जब ऑफिस जाती थी मेट्रो पकड़ के जस्ट टू थ्री ईयर्स बैक वेन आई वॉज रेलवे फॉर थ्री ईयर्स सो आई टू टेक द मेट्रो बिकॉज द मेट्रो में मैं कुछ थर्टी फाइव मिनट्स में ऑफिस पहुंच जाती थी गाड़ी में आई टू टेक मी One and a half hours. So I used to use metro. Even then, my house was one and a half minutes, two minutes from the metro station. But my father used to come. If it's early, it's bad day. Andhera ho gaya. My dad would come to walk me back from the station. Even at this age, I'm forty-five. So, so my sir said, "Be boti thi lo ya sir, our boss came to office to say, 'Ki sir, how can I discuss everything? Traffic is always the biggest problem in the city.'" And uh, you know, so many things are the biggest. How come the fact that half the population, fifty percent of the population, is unhappy and literally living in trauma is not an after crisis? Is because of parliament, but it's not true. 
उसमें हर डिपार्टमेंट में सबसे ऊपर एजेंडा क्यों नहीं होता है कि क्यों लेट इज स्टार्ट फ्रॉम आर ओन ऑफिस लाइक डीडीए हैज स्टार्टेड आई थिंक दे हैव मेड अ लॉट ऑफ प्रोग्रेस लेट इज स्टार्ट फ्रॉम आर ओन प्रमाइसेस आर ओन ऑफिसर्स कि इज द वुमेन फीलिंग स्पेशल आई वुड से वी शुड ऑल मेक द एफर्ट टू नॉट मेक श्योर शी इज फीलिंग इक्वल वी नीड टू मेक हर फील कंफर्टेबल एंड स्पेशल अगर वो हम करेंगे ना हमें लगेगा स्पेशल कर रहे हैं एक्चुअली वो बेसिक हो रहा है so in my office uh, now i'll just give you end with before i just show you the slide in my office now that i have just uh, now i'm like heading the unit so just two very interesting anecdotes i want to share so when, when i joined and uh, there was a lot of thoda sa wo hota hai thoda you feel you know certain vibes from the office to maine sabko to din maine baat bulaya aur maine ek ek karke sabse baat kari ki kya issue hai ki mujhe lag raha hai ki kuch issue hai तो एक है मेरे बेस्ट ऑफिसर है एक्चुअली वेरी वेरी गुड केपेबल ऑफिसर उन्होंने कहा कोई नहीं है कोई कुछ इशू नहीं है मैम बस हमें थोड़ा टाइम तो लगेगा ना लेडी बॉस के साथ एडजस्ट करने <laughs> मैंने कहा अच्छा तो मुझे टाइम नहीं लगता था मेल बॉस के साथ एडजस्ट करने के लिए वो तो मेरा ड्यूटी है मेल बॉस के साथ एडजस्ट करना लेकिन आपके लिए मुश्किल है फीमेल बॉस के साथ तो एक ये था तो उसका है कि इन आर ऑफिस वी हैव टू टॉयलेट्स व्हिच आर रिजर्व लाइक वी हैव एवरी रूम हैज अ फ्लैश टॉयलेट तो स्टूडियो हैज अ एवरीथिंग एंड देन देयर आर कॉमन टॉयलेट्स सो दो टॉयलेट है जो एक मेरे रूम में है और एक मेरी जो पीएस है शी इज आल्सो अ डीडी उनके रूम में है और फ्लैश टॉयलेट है और मेरे पीएस के साथ उनका जो जीएसए है और क्लॉक सेम भी उनके साथ है एंड यू नो द क्लॉक हैज द एक्सेस ही जस्ट हैज टू गो नेक्स्ट डोर और वॉक लाइक Ten meters in it, and there is a big toilet which he can use. He will use my PSS toilet, and she would get it. <laughs> so I had to put up a notice that this is only for females, and this is okay. Third one, don't. Another one, uh, a lady joined. Uh, there was, you know, we have these thing called DEOs, uh, data entry operators. So they uh, there were three boys who were working, and थोड़ा सा गंदा काम होता है फाइल वगैरह करना हाथ गंदे हो जाते हैं तो वो वगैरह करना तो एक का ट्रांसफर हो गया और एक लेडी आ गई सो देर वॉज अ प्रोटेस्ट फ्रॉम माई ऑफिस की लेडी है वो मना कर देंगी ड्रॉइंग का काम करना वो जल्दी चली जाएंगी मैम आप उसको नहीं लीजिए हम लड़के को रख लिए मैंने कहा आप क्या आपके पास क्या उसका बस लेडी है बहाने मारेंगी कुछ और करेंगी और मेहनत नहीं करेंगी ऐसे मतलब ये अजम्पन तो ठीक नहीं है लेट अस ट्राई हर तो अभी शी हैज जॉइन एंड द अदर बॉय हैज गॉन एंड शी इज परफेक्टली फाइन वो 6 बजे तक काम भी करती है वो टाइम पे भी आती है और जो काम होना जाता है वो हसी से करती है सो ये जो प्रेजुडिसेस हैं आई थिंक ये तो आई वाज देयर एज अ फीमेल बॉस सो आई वाज एबल टू फाइट देम बट आई थिंक द डे वी विल रियली हैव थिंग्स लाइक वुमेन बिकम हैप्पी एंड एट लीस्ट एट पीस चैन से नींद आएगी रात को होगा जब मैन विल स्टार्ट स्टैंडिंग अप फॉर देयर फेलो फीमेल को वर्कर्स दैट्स व्हेन यू विल एक्चुअली सी द सी द चेंज हैप अदरवाइज यू नो दीस थिंग्स जो मैम ने बाकी सब ने बात किया वो तो है ही है मैंने सोचा कुछ सिस्टेमिक प्रॉब्लम्स भी मैं बात करूं बिकॉज़ वी नीड टू ऑल बी कॉन्शियस ऑफ दीस इन आवर स्पेशल डिजाइन एंड आवर स्पेशल ऑपरेशंस सो जस्ट आई शो फ्यू स्लाइड्स while that's opening ma'am i am very curious ki aap kaise manage karti hain because this <laughs> you don't understand these issues i'm sure you have done a big time then working for your hands because police ka focus hamesha hota hai jaise aap logo ne sari ka ne baat kari about vendors aapne bhi baat kari about vendors to so, utpac mein jab bhi hum vendors ki baat karte the aur bolte the ki this is required for safety for vibrancy so the the thought used to come to come police that uh, it's going to cause a traffic jam so traffic is always more more important position at the proper place and ah yeah. that is important aur baad mein vendors ko menace jo hai wo baad mein wo second third level pe aane lag jata hai that is that is the solution that needs to be looked at but uh, like if you see cannot place i right? think scared it cannot place after but wo hi jo metro leke main lakshmi nagar mein utarti hu I think that's a yes, but I feel completely safe. 
So, as I think, in the worst case scenario, we can have a balanced scenario where we can have some planned focus. So, just four or five slides, sir. Uh, I'll just show. Sorry. So, I just wanted to show uh, since our office worked on the TOD policy, I just wanted to show you a few features which are ingrained in the TOD policy. And since you have a lot of senior uh, planners, hai, uh, you know, whenever sir, it's a very danger here. Because the whole country is doing TOD, kar hai, you know, because it's a mandate as part of metro policy. But they are looking at it only as FAR. And that is the danger. FAR was, FAR was not able to do TOD. You can't do TOD. You can't do TOD. You can't do TOD. So, TOD ke jo principles and jo components are the same. Jo, jaise, in code, mein jo changes hai, building bylaws, mein changes hai, the development code mein jo changes hai, which are part of the TOD policy. Sir, I'm not going to do that. It's like, I'm going to do that. And the next slide. Sir, this actually is building this high five photo. This is the police headquarters. This is the IT building. 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 And the light is the IT building. This is the IT building. This is the IT building. This is the IT building. क्योंकि एसपीएस से हम बस पकड़ने जाते थे तो ये सब पीछे के जो गली है ना लेफ्ट साइड जी देन इट गोस टू द टाइप्स ऑफ इंडिया जी सर जी तो ये एक्सपीरियंस था सर नाउ अभी जो बिल्डिंग बायलॉज हैं जो नॉन ड्यूटी बायलॉज हैं उन उनसे आपको यही मिलेगा बिकॉज़ द मोमेंट वी हैव अ मैंडेटेड 15 मीटर 9 मीटर सेटबैक अगर मैं भी इस बिल्डिंग के ओनर हूं मैं भी बाउंड्री वॉल बनाऊंगी क्योंकि मुझे अपना लैंड तो प्रोटेक्ट करना है ना so, the setback has been mandated. Now, there are some improvements in the current UVBL, but the TOD policy is the one that we have to do. We have to operate. That's fair. Because there are more slides. So, this is the street, sir. It can be like this. And the mess way, the photocopy, the mess way, the photocopy, the mess way, 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 are permitted as part of the setback uh, while leaving the fire movement behind it. So you can get a more vibrant uh, street like this. So even the worst street can become safe for women. You don't have to spend hours on it. Just that it's not done anything, it's just that it's by law change. Streets have to be welcoming. Yes, yes. These are not safe. They can go and they can go. But these little coaches should not look like haunted. That is the biggest thing. Yeah, when places are haunted and broken, immediately right. it might be the center of crime. Yeah, yeah, so the actual absolute. Dar to lagta hai na, ma. Ko matlab raat ko akele sunshiya jagah mein dar to bahut lagta hai. Ye bhi ek aur aisi street hai, to iska bhi aisi boundary wall hai. Aur baad mein dekhiye, kuppa chupke ghar chal raha hai, aur aurat to jaldi nahi hai yahan pe. Aur raat ko to ab nahi jao yahan koi nahi tha. So this this thing and this is the same situation, but this is actually I N A. Which has been done very beautifully now. The INA market, if you've seen, so उधर अच्छी footpath wide बन रही है और बढ़िया lights लग रही है and it's very nice to walk on that street and go to the metro station from the car center. तो ये again इसमें कुछ नहीं है. This is not a project. This is just a modification in building bylaws. So this actually the role only of planner. किसी और का role है ही नहीं इसमें. It is there's no role of the design. ये भी है थोड़ा एक बैक चाहिए सर भी हाँ थोड़ा एक बैक हो हाँ तो ये भी है सर जो मतलब एक जो मैंने बात करी कि अबाउट डी एबिलिटी ऑफ वुमेन टू ट्रैवल वॉक एक चीज मैंने छोड़ दी खाने से भी उस टाइम कि इधर लोड ऑफ वुमेन यू नो वो हैव अ फाइट विद देयर हस्बैंड्स और फादर्स टू गो टू वॉक यू � जैसे गर्ल्स हैं वो जॉब करना चाहती हैं कि मैं अभी शादी नहीं करूंगी मैं पांच साल बाद शादी करूंगी लेकिन पेरेंट्स के घर में रह रहे हैं लड़ लूट के लड़ाई कर रहे हैं जॉब कर रहे हैं I was one of them उसकी तो उनके लिए क्या है कि वो जो पॉकेट मनी होती है या पढ़ाई के लिए जा रहे हो कोई कोर्स कर रहे हो आगे कॉलेज से तो चलना क्यों प्रेफरेंस करोगे तो जब हमारा बिल्डिंग ब्लॉक और जो प्लॉट साइज जैसे ऐसी है जो पहले था वे प्रूव हो गया है आई थिंक बर्गर द प्लान मास्टर प्लान यूज्ड टू से कि ग्रुप हाउसिंग कैन बी ओनली ऑन फोर हेक्टर शुरू में था तो तब क्या है ये चार हेक्टर का ही साइट है सो यू कैन दिस ह्यूज म 
almost three times, four times more I have to walk. So immediately what we have done through a planning now is disempower that lady who wanted to save that five rupees on the rickshaw, in 10 rupees on the rickshaw, we have said that by 15 minutes, 20 minutes, so we have to take the rickshaw. So the moment her expense goes up, it becomes a challenge for her to continue to choose to study or continue to choose to do her job or whatever. When you are dependent on someone else, it becomes a challenge. So to solve this, if you just click, simple, the bylaws are used in rock size mandate that if you have a road network, Plot ka, this is a good set of plots in fact, if you see, this is part of the UD policy. Uh, if you see the west, uh, the money line, jo hai, ye, si line hai? blue line. Blue line ke along those sari janapur ki dar. Yeah, so there are lots of these large plots in which have metro on one side and the abadi behind it and you have these linear plots. So it's important to say that you have this frequency of streets that you, you have smaller. So we have a TOD policy to notify that every 100 meters, 80 to 100 meters, you have to have a pedestrian. So people can just choose to walk instead of having to take these long duties and get dependent on a vehicle or a rickshaw or an auto rickshaw. That this is shown in this example. Like Niche Kane, you have this huge parking lot, so you have to walk around it to get to your destination. Top half ka agar aap dekhe, or your, your destination is at the metro station and your parking is behind it or it can be under the building walls. So again, these are changes in building bylaws and planning norms which enable this environment to come. Next, so, haan. third is uh, the priority. I remember phase one metro was implemented third and we started we used to use metro phase one, one blue line phase one. So in that you can see Jamuna Bank or somewhere you can see the car is like running over your face. And somebody has come to pick you up. So this got corrected. This definitely UTPEC played a very big role in this. He, this policy was called multimodal integration guidelines, which is also part of the master plan uh, 2021. Uh, he gave the guidelines that the metro station is 100 meters, there is a pedestrian is gone. You can't do anything in 100 meters, 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 you can't do anything in 200 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 meters, you can not do uh, phase 3, which uh, you have done, you will see all of this during the roadway stations. Hai. They have very big public plazas and pedestrian spaces. Uh, pick up drop off of auto rickshaws and all is very well run down and uh, kept away from the pedestrian areas. So this is an example. Maybe I would recommend everybody to go and check this out. Uh, we never implemented photos and any done This is Chhatrapur Metro Station. Just click next. This is now implemented. So pehle upar wala tha. They keep the Dushmani of Mari Hair, Ortho Kesar, the pedestrians Kesar. He took Pura Plaza, then he said, Sakabuka, put Tango. But the eight Chalmiki Jagani, eight light him. But the Kya Sochi Banate. Or if ye vision Tana or ye vision of implemented Yaku, other time in it, please Jaki of the station take it. So the metro implement the other and now proper cycle tracks pick up for every mode is separate and the Walking on this diet, he has stations at Nikle or Samne bus stop of Sida Jasaki or side may Sarah Mozaras or Tone and Richard. It works really nicely. So, this was a model project done by Metro, but when you have a side station, then you can back the Sarah Mane around it. Or here, of course, this is Vikas Mark. This is what it was 10 years back, and I think it is still this. But this way, Mujay again, it is the Tayaki, Abdiki is me. कि साइड में आपकी बिल्डिंग है लीगल बिल्डिंग है अनऑथराइज्ड की दीज आर ऑल लीगल बिल्डिंग्स और यहां शॉप्स हैं शॉप्स के आगे आपको चलने की जगह चाहिए या पार्किंग की जगह चाहिए कि आप गाड़ी से उतरो और एकदम जंप मारो शॉप के अंदर सो सिंपल इफ यू जस्ट क्लिक नाउ एवरीबॉडी इज देयर पेडेस्ट्रियन की जगह हमने शॉप के सामने दे दी तो दुकान भी आपकी चल पड़ी साइड में पार्किंग की भी जगह हमने दे दी साइकिल की भी जगह दे दी साइकिल रिक्शा की भी जगह दे दी ठीक है साइकिल रिक्शा की जगह नहीं है उसको आप हटा भी लो लेकिन पार्किंग को पैदल पार्किंग करके सीधा जगह पे रखें 
ताकि सबको जो हक है स्पेस का वो मिले
specifically women who are residing three to five kilometers away from the main line hall, that is away from the metro station or the bus stop nearest to them. So these women, either they are forced to take uh, auto, uh, sorry, shared mode like uh, Vikram, all these modes, IPT modes, or the cycle rickshaws, or they are being dropped by their partner by cycle or two wheeler. So they are dependent on either their partner or they were forced to take such uh, options. And to save their uh, monthly expenditure on uh, travel, they either they are working and they have to be like uh, they were they mentioned like they have to be at their home before say sunset or something like that because the access road or that is not properly lit or that is not safe for them to travel in night or like this so these were the major findings like i would like to share and contribute in this proceeding so that is thank you thank you monica thank you monica for telling us because for doctoral research that much you have done the surveys based on what are the findings and that low income we were discussing this earlier also it is not only for only high income groups but for low income group, women also what needs to be done so we have to think that the city is inclusive city has to be inclusive city has not all um, kind of all um, you can say income group uh, women and we have to cater to that and that's, that's actually our is our responsibility Yes, anybody else? Uh, Ma'am Lalita Ramanadu. <coughs> uh, Ma'am, unmute yourself and ask your question. Yes, sir. Uh, it's a wonderful session, uh, in fact, uh, conducted by this uh, thing. I appreciate all the insights provided, and mostly I was observing that these can be. Uh, the point what we have discussed is what you have uh, uh, discussed is about the uh, new uh, cities are to be developed or what kind of bylaws are to be incorporated and other things. But how about the existing cities can be uplifted uh, by means of cycle tracks or hardly we can find pedestrian tracks, uh, especially in a city like Hyderabad. I am a resident of Hyderabad. I am an architect and a research scholar from Satyabama University. So I am looking for these kind of pedestrian tracks or the uh, cycling tracks. Uh, how we can incorporate in the metro cities? Uh, can we have any uh, insight on that? Any of the speakers who want to uh, respond to what the uh, has raised this issue? Sarika has, I think, implemented a lot of cycling. Sarika, can you respond? Yeah, sure. Uh, so it's first step is you need to convince the uh, decision maker of your city that is the first step uh, like you know uh, convincing them is a big big task you know most of the thing what they feel is you know there is a traffic jam so we need to build more road they don't think beyond that so if you going to your municipal corporation or development authority you are taking as a pilot to demonstrate something though pilots pilots are not the solutions it has to be citywide planning um, but uh, you know going with the data you know i'm just giving you an example how we like started all these things in gurgaon there was one of this road in uh, industrial area in udyog vihar um, initially the government uh, there there was a traffic jam okay in that road and government decided to cut all the 400 trees and widening that road without doing any study okay so then we jumped in and we said that we are not allowing to cut any tree because already we are sitting in the most polluted city in the world and we did a survey and after the traffic survey after the land use survey because we don't do land use when we are building roads we don't even think that oh there is a school there is a hospital it's a densely residential area and how we can cut through a highway uh, along this uh, land use we don't think that right and when we did a survey we got to know that almost 80 percent people in that road either walk cycle or use pub informal public transport e-rickshaws auto rickshaws say rickshaws okay and rest 20 percent use two wheelers and cars and trucks and tractors and other things because it's an industrial area 
So why we need wide road widening? Then we don't need road widening. The problem was that in the two lane road, one lane was actually occupied by the pedestrian cyclists and e-rickshaws. So what we did is that, you know, with this, we went with this data. Let us see what data is telling. Why you want widening this road for this 5% cars? You know, you just don't need it. So you need to segregate the slow moving from first moving. So data is very important. You want to implement such things, go with data and our data will always support because we know that in our city, 50% people walk and cycle and use public transport system. So go with data, counter that. And then we jumped in and said, we will design the street and uh, the street is going to complete soon. And from one street, when they realize that, oh, the street can be built like this, now multiple streets like that are coming up in Gurgaon and uh, you know and we have like-minded officers now who are very open to this idea so this is uh, it's a long journey uh, Romi has also done that it's a very long long journey but if you want to implement something in your city this is the first step data is important go with the data and like you know and then give them the solution and work with them because that is the problem again. You know, in government department, we they don't need Gyan anymore. They need someone sitting there and working with them. This is how we are doing that. You know, you need to provide them with designs, drawings, standing there while there is a construction going on and guiding them throughout the process. So all these things is very, very important. Thank you, Zarika. I think let us, uh, let us question and the queries are answered that what is uh, what is the way forward and how how can we go about it all these we teach generally in uh, in academic seat tell everybody but then you know how to be more effective as planners that is what i think we should learn and how to communicate with, with the implementers and getting things implemented i think that's where we sometimes lag behind and we have to be more proactive and Get things done, get in definitely data is so very important. Without information, without knowing, like we have so many mobility plans of various cities we have. Actually, how people are moving, different uh, stakeholders, how they are how they are uh, going from one uh, uh, from their from to various destinations, from their home, last mile connectivity, all that needs to be needs to be there as in terms of an existing situation. Then only we can work on it. So, in fact, I think uh, there's another question from here, Priyanka, I think there's a question. Ma'am, uh, as ma'am told about the ITPA in the street, so we also used to come from Metro to SPSCA, and on this pathway, what we feel is key, the, the, where the footpath is, people, people are not using that footpath to walk from uh, one side to the, to the Metro, but they used to use the back street which is uh, under the foot over bridge and the uh, bus stop. People used to use that street and even we used to use that street only for uh, reaching the metro station. So what problem actually face there? Maybe not a problem, but uh, the users there because mostly the users there are the vendors. Okay. So, and, and obviously, obviously dead class people only people used to. So they used to even use, uh, use that place as a washroom and also there is very smell of everything is there. And also, it is quite unsafe. Like we, even walking in a day, although it's on the main road, I think that ITPA is a little bit behind, so that is a little bit behind. But you know, our main road is not there. But still, we feel unsafe walking there even in the daytime or in the evening time. So I think there there should be something. Just making our general public awareness is also very important. And even we should uh, strict our rules for uh, for the people to use that space. Because we see that if we say we are on this street, we are not going to be able to dump it anywhere. Nobody tells us that here we have all the big big institutes, police headquarters, PWD, SPS there. But still, there is no managed to our street. We have never managed to make a bit of a mess. Even we feel unsafe walking there. So I think that we have a very good design, but the users play an important role. So how can users get general awareness to use that space? Thank you, Priyanka. And I think, uh, we, uh, I think uh, we now we will uh, try to bring the session to a close uh, and request uh, Professor Dr. Alka Bharat 
She is the vice chairperson IT Fair Women's Forum and professor of Manit Bhopal. So, uh, Ankaji, please uh, give your vote of give the vote of thanks to her for this uh, program. Namaskar. Uh, first of all, apologies uh, for not being uh, present in person. There, uh, it was in fact very interesting and inspiring seminar, loaded with the best from learned speakers and participants. It's my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks. I, Alka Bharat, co-chairperson, Women's Wing of ITPI, on behalf of the Wing, would like to thank ITPI President, Dr. Misha, Secretary, uh, Mr. Kapoor, and their team for going extra mile in recognizing women in the profession by formally having a dedicated women's wing and supporting exclusive activities through this platform. A special thanks and lots of appreciation to the eminent speakers, Dr. Rashmi Sharma Yadav, Ms. Sarika Pandabhat, and Ms. Parumita Roy for spending valuable time and sharing their robust experience and creating awareness through their wonderful thoughts. Heartfelt thanks to the participants for their active participation. We hope all of you enjoyed a lot and we look forward for meeting you all again. Gratitude to all organizers, staff, and others involved directly and indirectly for their selfless efforts to make this event happen. I request all to please watch a very revolutionary and strong new trailer that has come from Nike that celebrates crazy women. Lastly, let's pledge to move further with strong and close-knit society, which is gender sensitive and age-friendly, inclusive and equitable. Thanks a lot. Thanks, everybody. Oh my God. Thank you. Uh, Bharat, uh, uh, it has been, in fact, it has been really nice to, to uh, have that kind of spot in time. In fact, we are taking many days to, uh, so that we can go ahead with uh, many thoughts and what can we, what we can do. And all of us need to put in our efforts to do something to bring in this change. Thank you so much. Thank you for everybody who has joined online, offline. Thanks all of you to uh, be a part of this uh, very important session on the safety of women in cities. Thanks all of you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. So, for people who are in person,